Eating Stone by Ellen Milloy. eating stone. Ellen Milloy, eating stone, imagination and the loss of the wild. Sheep. The Virgin River vanishes in canyon rock, leaving tear stains for the mountain sheep who graze on the stone, who know the earth is steep in every direction, who know geometry is merely the shape of stone, empty space, memory of hooves. We want to ask, how can you live here? But we drive fast past their answer. Our attention always ahead of us. Kenneth Brewer Eating Stone The Blue Door Band The Blue Door Band Homo sapiens have left themselves few places and scant ways to witness other species in their own world, an estrangement that leaves us hungry and lonely. In this famished state, it is no wonder that when we do finally encounter wild animals, we are quite surprised by the sheer truth of them. Nothing speaks the truth quite like the 220-pound desert bighorn ram mounted atop a standing female, thrusting his heavy pelvis back and forth like there was no tomorrow. It was the rut. Males, usually solo in our bachelor bands, had joined the females which for the rest of the year lived separately with random groups of juveniles. The rams were glossy, fat, spirited. Their thick curled horns and heavy testicles carried a few million years of evolutionary momentum. Here in the canyon, not much else mattered but the bone and muscle needed to transport these body parts. On four hooves rode massive sperm factories. I had put the river between myself and the rutting grounds, not that I was much more than wallpaper as the sheep copulated. I shared guilt over trespass with other warriors. The few subdominant rams, unlucky in love, six nearby ooze, a pair of lecherous ravens perched on a boulder. The mating unfolded quickly, but the, with a ritualized certainty. Among a species with a complex repertoire of social behaviors, the penalty of ambiguity is reproductive failure. As the ram dropped off the mound, the other males brawled in rushes, kicks, and threats displays. One lung towards the ew only to have his butt smashed by her guardian, the ram of spent force, but fixed vigilance. The ear ran off disappeared from view, pursued by the younger suitors. The Snoopy ravens left their perch and followed. The remaining ooze already inseminated are not yet in estrus and therefore not ready to breed, moved about restlessly 
then settled down to feed. The Colorado Plateau Canyon country is one of the several wilderness holdouts of this subspecies of a North American bovid family, genus Ovis, commonly known as a mountain sheep. Strict regulation prohibit the hunting of desert bighorns except by special permit. Compared to their sports celebrity, hulky northern cousin, the Rocky Mountain Bighorn of the Intermountain West and Canadian Rockies, desert bighorns are smaller, paler, and longer in year. They are more isolated and fewer in number. In some places, they face extinction of their native range. Four races of desert bighorn sheep live in the arid wilds of the American Southwest and Mexico. Of these races, my momentarily sex grazed sheep are Nelson's bighorn, occupants of the Colorado Plateau, Great Basin, and Mojave Desert. The ewes that fed quietly on the talus of the river canyon had slender, upright horns that escaped notice while the horns of males dominated one's gaze. Ram horns flare and curl. Aboriginal Southwesterners took their form and gave them to their gods. For modern humans, the headgear is an icon of blood sport. To other sheep, ram horns are social organs. Desert big horns are blocky, long-necked, ungulates, grayish-brown in color, sometimes more gray than brown, or pale beige, or with a russet cast. Their noses are moist and their rumps are white. They eat dry, abrasive plants, digesting them with four chambered stomachs and the help of protozoa and bacteria. The five gates of bighorn sheep reflect their mental state. From a pompous show-offy walk to an exuberant trot down a near vertical rock face or a 25 mile per hour escape run. Their hearts pump at a rate of 80 beats per minute. The life of a bighorn sheep is life spent on cliffs. The rut marked the beginning of my year among desert bighorns, a calendar in which I matched my seasonal geography to theirs. I made up a name of my own and gave it to the herd that lived in the river canyon, the Blue Door Band. Over the four seasons that I would spend with them, I would be their amiable, nosy neighbor. I peered at them through binoculars, spotting scope, and with naked eye. I watched them stare into space fall asleep on their own feet, curl up in a tight sleep ball and nap with their chins on the ground. I watched them yawn, chew and stretch. They scratched their backs on the rocks. They hated brushy densities of trees. Their tongues hung out when they were thirsty. A few dropped dead. A few spent swimming. The ooze raised a new generation. The rams roamed about alone in ram bands, then came together and bashed heads, curled lips, and engaged in wildly testicular behavior. True to their species, these animals loved bleak, hairball country. They were nervous, gregarious, hilarious, agile, gorgeous, Faithful to place to the point of disaster. They came with personalities. The bullies, the headbangers, the celibate pacifist ram, the barren ooze, the lambs perched atop sheer pinnacles of rock, leaping straight up in the air like toast popping out of a toaster. They were often elusive and spectral. To see them was a blessing. As they entered the rut, the Blue Door Band numbered about 80 sheep. Out of this population, and depending on the season, I would sometimes see loners, trios, or groups that ranged from 5 to 20 individuals. I gave the sheep 
full held breath attention, sometimes lifting my binoculars to my eyes at midday, unaware of the passing hours until I dropped them, only then noticing that the sun had nearly set.